Hello. You have just one chance in 139,838,160 of winning first prize in the weekly multi-million pound Euro Millions Lottery. But tremble ye not, for I have drawn the numbers that you have won first prize against odds of 150 million to one, a finally, so rightly, for once in your life, being in the right place and the right time. Congratulations. Hello, David McMillan here, former border crosser and professional mischief maker. From time to time, I waste my time by listening to futurists. They tell us things we already know. They talk about the Internet of Things, extracting water on the moon, and as always, the longer lasting battery. You won't hear anything that will be a great surprise, and usually, the video it comes with features a bald guy sitting in a chair in a dark room, or Michio Kaku, again telling us things we already know, like um, Stephen Hawking's eyeglasses that follow his eyeballs to type into his speech generator. Michio seems to call that telepathy. But Michio has long white hair. Luckily for all of us, the future will be better than that. I'm sure you share my disappointment at watching futurists do little better than make the same mistakes about smart clothing and for real tricorders that futurists of a decade ago gushed about. If you were born around 1980, modern and developing medicine should ensure you live until 2080. Unless you're unlucky and get uh, vaporized by the runaway tip of an offshore wind farm blade. Anyway, that not happening, that would make you 100 years old. I don't mean 100 and looking like a drooling bleached prune, but looking middle-aged and with most faculties intact. That's because by 2050, we should have cracked the problem of telomeres. Those are the end caps on strands of DNA. Every time DNA makes a copy of itself, the end caps get shorter. When the strand frays, the cell can no longer replicate, re-age, then die. Now, as I said last week, dying was a good thing. It weeds out the sickly. Those who did not die young made us what we are today. But by 2060, when you're 80 yet looking 45, threaded bundles of microscopic electronic fibers will serve as brain implants delivering signals and drugs to the brain and central nervous system. In truth, stimulus signals, more than drugs because well, that's what drugs do in the brain. Most medicines will amount to uh, prescriptions in program code that tickle the correct neurons for the effect needed. I suppose that will put the illicit drug trade out of business. Ecstasy will be mere lines of code. I don't know if that could be sold. And depression will be controlled by an app. All the central nervous system failings fixed by programmers signalling a little pod full of gold wires running through your skull. It makes me wonder if there will be black market code for happiness programs. I'm sure there will be, but more wondrously, if there is such a thing, how will we stop ourselves pressing the joy button every five seconds? But I don't want to get sidetracked on the technology, the toy rooms. Anyone can throw that at you. This is about us, humankind, or more particularly, 
you watching this. You are among the two or three generations to live through the oncoming wave. In the far future, people will look back to the two stages of civilization. The world before full machine intelligence and the world after. Machines that can teach themselves, test themselves and think up innovations to solve problems. What, so you think a computer can't be as inventive as a person? Well, it can. Almost all the mental processes that we use to find novel solutions to problems are ones that computers use. Having consciousness, as we worship it, is little more than having half a dozen personalities within our mind constantly comparing what the other one thinks. Complete AI will, of course, drive our cars, run the factories, build the robots that build the houses, as well as argue law, diagnose disease, and write greeting cards. And that last one, a tough trade. Comparative AI will allow discovery and design. Building fusion reactors for cheap, pollution-free electricity, making clothes, designing clothes, making the machines to make the clothes, and arranging delivery. By the way, no one will wear those smart clothes, those sweaty novelty disguises. <clears throat> the computers will put most people out of a job, but at least prevent more global warming. Big AI won't catch everything, say, uh, an unexpected ice age. But the, if there is a fix for that, then machine intelligence will devise one. Yes, at some point you'll be out of a job, but there will be 25 years or so during implementation when putting this new structure in place will give plenty of educated grunt work. So, with half the world out of work as food-making goes indoors, and more than half the world economy devoted to the healthcare business, along with human augmentation, there won't be much paid work. Sure, for quite some time, human service will have high pay. A cheap restaurant will have some snazzy robot waiters. But the high-end eateries will have connoisseur advisors, as will theme parks and skills trainers. They'll have real people and pay for them. But the robots will be for low-rent zones. That distinction, along with the android sex partner business, will give human-looking robots a bad name from which they'll never recover. Well, in fashion terms. You'll be paid a universal credit on borrowed state money to entertain yourselves. A, su a sustainable economy won't work any other way. There will be other niche jobs for a few years. I guess human interface correctors who sit watching the entertainment output pressing like and no like buttons so the computers will know when the CGI avatars of living, dead, and invented actors are believable. Mind you, once they understand the process behind human credibility, even those jobs are gone. I spent many years, alone, thinking this through, and I can't see any reason to stop it. Making a thinking machine might not be as tough as all that either though it seems to be. You could start in the nursery of it. Let evolutionary training on a chip struggle with the neural mathematics, while a substrate layer beneath holds sensors to map the winning pathways, then read off the maths. Here's what's special about where you fit in. You have been born at a time when you have experienced the feel of pastimes yet will also know the taste of future life. I have bundled this idea into three sets, three sets of videos. You can click on to the next or come back when you have time. I know you are 
busy or, or just have short attention spans. In part two, you have turned 100 in around 2075. But you're looking good. What's going on? See you soon.